What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to be getting into a dish that we love here at our house. Now, people ask me from time to time, Matt, do you like to cook indoors as well as outdoors? Well, for me, I love cooking outdoors, but I also kick indoors. Today we're going to do a combination. I'm going to be doing some prep work outside and then I'll be going taking it inside to show you how I finish up this meal. And basically what I'm doing today is I'm making one of our favorite family dinners. And I'm going to also give you some tips and tricks along the way. So definitely stay tuned. We're getting ready to make some chicken enchiladas. Let's go. All right, first things first. When I'm making chicken enchiladas with chicken breast, uh, I actually use a few different tips tricks if you will to get these where I need to be and there's a reason for it basically to help keep them tender moist and also flavorful when the cook is inevitably done so basically what I'm doing is taking these breasts out right now still a little frozen that's okay now if you want to skip this step and you want to make your meal even easier I suggest stopping at your local grocery and getting a cooked whole chicken rotisserie and bringing that home and shredding it. But I'm going to take you from the very beginning of how I do this, including the chicken breast. Alright, so when I have a large breast like this, <laughs> basically what I do is I like to take them and split them in half. And again, part of this is because, one, I want the cook to go relatively easy, uh, meaning it'll cook through faster, quicker. And once I've sliced up my chicken breast and I have, I put those basically in a Ziploc bag. It's really for two reasons. One's I'm gonna put some marinade in here. Uh, but two, uh, I just think it's easier than using wax paper or cellophane or any of that. I think this is the easiest way to go. So. This is gonna help flatten out the meat, which I'm sure you know. And it's also gonna allow it to get to a point where it's a little bit more easier to cook through um, both sides obviously I'm gonna do this probably in the skillet outside today uh, but be taking it inside for the remainder of the cook so we'll get this kind of finished up and then we'll go. all right so on to the marinade now I have this season that we like to make and use for a lot of our meals uh, including chicken enchiladas but if you want to skip this step and just buy you a pre fajita marinade by all means you can do that uh, but I'm gonna put the typical ingredients I have in there I'm also using some of this green jalapeno sea salt from my friends at Guste Vite so uh, if you get a chance check them out as well um, so I basically got in here maybe a third of a cup seasoning next I'm gonna add some orange juice probably about I don't know maybe half a cup and then I'm gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of this apple cider vinegar and then last but not least, about a tablespoon of this extra virgin olive oil. Basically what I'm gonna do is stir that up. Get it mixed really good. Seems like I'm getting it everywhere and not obviously where it needs to be. <laughs> and obviously taking my chicken that's in my bag and then essentially dumping that all in there. And as you can see, that's going to get all in there. We're going to basically put this in the refrigerator for at least two hours. But I think I'm probably going to go closer to three or four today because we have time. Uh, and then it's going to allow all that meat to really uh, suck in a lot of that flavor from this uh, rub and seasoning as well as the other things that I added in there. So again, that's where we're at with this process. Stay tuned. Definitely hit that subscribe button. And like I said, a uh, little bit more tips and tricks to come on how I make this meal to include how I keep that chicken really tender. All right, we're getting ready to move on to the next step, the prep process, the ingredients that's gonna go into this chicken enchilada. But I wanna know from you in the comments below what you like in your chicken enchiladas. Is it a certain sauce? Is it certain cheeses? I know we all think, think like things a little bit differently. So let me know because I'm really curious. I like learning new things. I like seeing how other people are doing stuff out there. So definitely let me know. Now let's get into what the ingredients I'm going to put into this. And this is also something you can pre-buy as well if you want. All right, so we love bell peppers and onions in our enchiladas. I'm not really sure if other people feel the same way or what they like in theirs. But we like that as well as onions and that's basically what I'm doing is I'm basically getting these enchiladas or red pepper um, left over actually from another cook 
and I'm just going to dice this up and then we'll get that ready as well as the onion, the green bell peppers and I'm going to throw in a little trick. You could probably, uh, I know at some grocery stores they have these already pre-diced uh, so you could use these uh, obviously if you want to buy the pre made stuff at a grocery store usually in the produce section you could do that again that would cut down the amount of time uh, but this doesn't take too long so I'm gonna get all this diced up and then of course get this into a container to save for later on that I'm gonna be throwing in with these chicken enchiladas. Alright so we're back indoors and we're getting ready to finish up this cook I'm gonna show you a couple of tips and tricks that I personally like to use to keep this chicken moist it's worked out well for me and again it does help with the meal when it's all said and done. So we're gonna go in and get into it, show you what I got going. If you don't, please don't forget, hit that like, that subscribe button, uh, so you can catch more content. I'm gonna be doing a different variation of dishes as we go throughout this process. I'm gonna show you the different things that I've been learned over the years, and then of course, share those tips and tricks with you as well. So, and if there's anything you would like to see me cook or something that you would like to see be done or shared, please let me know again in the comments down below and let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I'm gonna be basically using this skillet to brown this marinated chicken. It's been marinating for, uh, well, about four hours. And then I'm gonna get this in there, get it browned on both sides, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Make sure you have something with a lid, uh, a skillet with a lid. If you don't have a skillet with a lid, probably won't work as well, but I'm getting ready to show you a tip that I do with this. So as the chicken begins to cook on each side, I just basically flip it over because you want to make sure you get it brown on both sides. And of course, um, as that gets more rendered down, basically I'm going to show you my next tip. So my trick is I add in a little chicken broth. Basically once I do that, I'm just going to take this top, put it on top, let it simmer. And that's going to help get that chicken meat moist and tender and then we'll go on to the next step. Once your chicken hits that 165 internal temp, that's the time to pull it off. And then I'm going to allow these to rest while I get the rest of the chicken cooked up. But that's basically the little tip for you. Uh, I got one more little trick coming up here for you. And I think you're going to like how this works out and it's one of the ways I keep again the chicken moist after I pull it off of here. So stay tuned. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to save this juice, if you will, this broth, leftover broth from that. And I'm getting ready to show you why here in just a second. First things first, I'm going to take the cooked chicken and yep, I am putting it in this mixer. There's a reason. You're getting ready to see why here in just a second. Go ahead and get all this in there. I'll let this chicken cool. Uh, I think it was about three or four minutes just to get kind of uh, into a cool place before I shred it, but here we go. Let's do this. Now, like I said, you could skip a lot of these steps and just buy a rotisserie chicken and kind of pull it apart yourself if you want, but I don't want to waste my time trying to get into that when I can use a mixer to do the same work. So you remember those juices that I strained? I'm gonna pour that in there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it up with a little bit more seasoning, just to kind of get it mixed in the bowl there a little bit. And guess what? You got it. I'm basically gonna hit it up again and get that spinning, get that all mixed in there. That'll help keep the chicken moist and also season. All right, so now we're gonna get into actually making the enchiladas. Just look how pull apart tender that chicken is that I'm putting in there. Uh, this is like I said an excellent recipe. We got the family over today so I thought we'd make up a bunch of these. Now this is where things get into personal preferences at least as far as I'm concerned. Some people will fill them with beans, some people will fill them with other things. This is what we like. I'm throwing a little bit of onion in here. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of those uh, bell peppers both green and red. Um, this is just my personal preference, like I said. And then for mine, I'm actually going to also take a little bit of these diced jalapenos. Just because I like mine hot. I mean, that's just me. Everybody's a little different. Do you? Um, also going to throw in a little Colby cheese. And then, of course, my one of my favorites, Monterey Jack. I've also used pepper jack cheese. That works, too. And then, basically, I'm just going to roll this up. 
get these into a casserole dish and then I'll show you what transpires next. All right, so as you can see, I got all these on here. And basically, I'm just doing, just taking some canned red enchilada sauce. I'm going to pour this on top. These are already filled. And then what I like to do, you don't have to do this. This is kind of to each their own kind of thing. But I like to put a little bit of the diced onions and bell peppers on top. And of course, I'll go back, get some more on there. And then, of course, once I get done adding the uh, bell peppers and then the onions on top of here, uh, I like it both in and out. Like I said, this is kind of my own personal preference, so you do what you want, but this is the way we like it. And now I'm going to do, basically, get the cheese on there. All right, first things first, throwing on my Monterey Jack cheese. Uh, it's one of my favorite cheeses that I mentioned earlier. I also like Colby. Uh, I've also used Pepper Jack, but this is what we're going with tonight. We're going with basically Monterey Jack, as well as the Kobe cheese on top. Uh, it's both inside and outside. Definitely uh, adds a little bit of filling and flavor to this meal. And we like it. And now I'm going to basically get the oven prepped. Uh, get it preheated uh, for 400 degrees. Uh, typically what we do is we bake it uh, for about 22 to 25 minutes. And then we'll broil it for about five minutes just to get the cheese on top uh, a little brown but you know again you don't have to do that uh, I would just uh, recommend at least baking it at 400 for 22 to 25 minutes depending on how well your oven works uh, just to get all that cheese melting uh, so stay tuned for that and we'll get into that next as you can see the enchiladas are done baking so I'm gonna get these off the plate and let's dig into it and see how they taste also just kind of a little tip uh, I mark mine uh, by putting the jalapenos that I chopped up earlier on top of mine so I can keep track of which one that are mine. So it's a little tip for you if you ever have to do that and mix things up a little bit. Uh, so let's get into it. See what it tastes like. chicken enchilada. Uh, I hope you like following along in this recipe. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also hit me up in the comments. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future. Uh, definitely uh, will tag you in that if obviously I decided to use one of your ideas. And again, thanks for watching.